Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this presentation of the Recognize Good Legends Ceremony honoring Miss Karen Crosby. We are pleased to be here at the Williamson County Juvenile Justice Center for this uh, presentation on this 25th day of July. I'm George Mahalchik, I'm the program coordinator, and what I'll do is I'll take you through a brief history of Recognize Good and the Legends. Then we have a couple of folks who would like to say a few good words about Karen. We have some gifts we want to present, and then Karen has time for a rebuttal on anything that they say. <laughs> Sometimes saying thanks is not good enough. And if you want to send a card, you can. If you would like to tell somebody and let the world know about it, or the good things that they've done, you can use recognize good to say thanks. You can say thanks to your family, moms, dads, sons, daughters, uh, grandparents, grandsons, nieces, nephews. Uh, you can say thanks to uh, your friends and your acquaintances as well. And we saw that when the thank yous came across that we had some that stood out head and shoulders above the others. And so we came up with what we call the Legends program and we started the Legends in 2010. And before we get into that, what I'd like to do is recognize some very important people. First off, Karen Crosby, our legend. <laughs> the members of the Crosby family, I think they're all sitting over here. And my special thanks goes out to Quinn for his service to our country as United States Marine Corps. So Quinn, thank you very much for that. I saw one guy sneak in the back, and that is Mr. Joe Dan Lee, the superintendent of the Georgetown ISD. We also have with us Mr. Bob Fisher, who will say a few words. Mr. John Copeland, who will talk to us a little bit about the locker. And we also have Mr. Alan Bijou back there in the back. That takes care of uh, the important folks. We also have one other significant person in here. The gentleman sitting in the blue shirt over there is Mr. George Wagner. George is a legend of class 2011, and you can see his name over there. So how did we get started on this? Well, back in 2007, the Tyrex Group was a winner in the Ethics and Business Award competition. In 2008, ABC Home and Commercial Services was another award winner. That award then was sponsored by the Samaritan Counseling Center. And these three groups got together and came up with Recognize Good. So we launched it in 2009, started getting in recognitions and thank yous from around the world. And in 2010, we saw that some rose above others. And so we started our Recognize Good uh, Legends class. Right now we have 2010, 2011, 2012, and we're currently working on 2013. Now, this is going to be a very nice ceremony because we're going to hear a lot of good words about Karen, but I want to emphasize that this does not stop here today. Keep in mind, this coming January, we are going to have our Say Thanks Austin campaign where folks from around the world, and I think we had something like 47 countries last year, submit thank yous to a legend each day or a number of legends each day. Should Karen receive more thank yous than anybody else during that period, we will make a $10,000 pay it forward donation in her name. So look for that in January. Our ceremony will be somewhere around February 7th in Austin at the City Hall. Now, that's enough about Recognize Good here. Let's get to the very good stuff. And the first person I'll ask to come up is Mr. John Copeland, who is the Executive Director of The Locker. Good afternoon. Two surprises. First, I have to say something. Second, I have to say something good. <laughs> um, I've been with The Locker now for, I guess, what, almost five years, Karen? 
uh, and I was, I was kind of brought into this thing accidentally. Um, I'm a Sun City resident, and so all the old folks get on the bus and go to the football game, and, and so one night I was there, and um, on the Jumbotron, or mini Jumbotron, was, was a little presentation about um, Eagle Locker at the time, uh, done by some students, and, and what brought me there, I guess, was two things. Um, what we call today Kids Helping Kids. In those days, it really was all about the kid because it was just so small that there was only basically kids there and Karen. So um, that kind of trapped me. So a couple of days later, um, I contacted Karen, and and it's been, um, do we say up and down ever since? Or we just say, okay. Anyway, we, we, have, we have moved forward now to the point where we, we have changed our name with the advent of um, Eastview High School. We're now called The Locker. We now have a board of directors in which Karen is the chairman and I'm the executive director. Um, and we're still all about kids helping kids. And I must tell you that the, if you want to look at the, at the train situation, um, she is the engine. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Um, this engine never turns off, let me just tell you. Uh, everything that happens having to do with the locker um, is um, driven by Karen Crosby. And we were without Karen Crosby for, what, 11 months, something like that, a little longer? And um, we got stopped at the depot for a while. So now that Karen is back, um, we are, you know, we are really full steam ahead, and um, we just got through with a three-day Camp Crosby program in which Mason was here and spent a day with the kickers, putting on a program, and then we hosted roughly 100 kids on that Saturday at Southwestern um, University, and it was run strictly by the kids. Um, students from the high schools as well as Southwestern University put this program on. And Karen and I basically stood in the shade as much as we possibly could and watched what was happening. And I must tell you that I surveyed every one of those students that came to that camp, and all we got back were nothing but positive, positives, positives. And even when we didn't survey, people around their community have talked to us how well that thing was put together. And it's all because of the influence that Karen has on our organization. So I must say to you, uh, one big thank you for me, for Karen Crosby. Thank you very much. Okay, one question. John, one question for you and for Joe Dan over there. How far will the Eagles go in the football season this year? And, and congratulations on the team going that far. I had a chance to talk with Jason Dean in the, uh, in the spring games, and he was very proud of uh, uh, everything that the, uh, the team had accomplished. And they're looking for greater things. Okay, next, uh, I had to twist some arms, fill some time, get folks to say stuff. We're gonna, I'm going to ask Mr. Bob Fisher to come up and say a few words. Well, uh, I, I met Karen... I think it was 12 or 13 years ago, and she was a discipline secretary at Benold Middle School. I was principal of the Georgetown Alternative Program, and so we had some common connection between sharing paperwork and knowledge about kids going back and forth between Benold and the Gap. Uh, and then around 2002, um, a guy from Austin came to me and asked me if I wanted to get involved in writing a grant for service learning for discipline alternative education programs. And I sat and listened to him for a while and thought, man, this sounds really cool. It sounds great. How long do we have? He said, about two days. As you can imagine, I was like, two days to write a grant? And I've never written one before. Hmm. Well, I took a chance uh, and helped the guy write the grant, and that's where service learning started in Georgetown, was at the Georgetown Alternative Program. Um, after a couple of years, uh, the initial person we hired to do that moved on to another uh, position, and, uh, you know, I thought, why not Karen Crosby? She was subbing for us. 
Uh, she's just uh, the type of person who connects with kids. Uh, she's a motivator, uh, nice as can be. Uh, and, you know, I had to do some convincing of my partner, and it wasn't Mr. Lee, because we had partnered with another organization to do this grant. Um, and I just said, you know, I don't care if she has a degree or not. I don't care if she's a teacher or not. She's got what it takes to do this, and let's give it a shot. So we agreed, and, you know, here we are, however many years later it is, and uh, for about eight years at The Gap, she helped us do service learning. And someone else is going to talk more to you about what service learning is, um, but it's given back to the community, and it's all about kids. Um, and we just did some really phenomenal things. Every year we did a uh, homeless um, celebration, I guess, if you will. That's really not a good way to say that. But every Christmas, uh, we basically put on a Christmas for our homeless students and their families in Georgetown. We did that for eight years running. Um, anyway, push come to shove. Two years ago, I was asked to come over here um, and be principal at this facility. And I said, absolutely. It sounds fun. I had taught here many years ago, and Karen Crosby came back from Amarillo around that same time, and so of course I called her. Uh, I've spoken to the assistant chief here and the chief of juvenile services about incorporating uh, that program into this facility, and you know she accepted. That was great, and we've really done a lot in two years here with with service learning, and Karen has impacted very positively, just about every kid she comes in contact with, um, myself included. I've gotten to know the Crosby family over the years, and they're just, uh, there's not a finer bunch of people out there. There really isn't. They're very giving. So I'm thrilled that Karen's getting this award. I think sh uh, she would gladly give all the credit to the kids that she works with uh, for all the things that they have done through her facilitation. Um, but, you know, I hope we continue this process for many more years to come because, you know, you, in my book, you're a difference maker. And so I thank you for that. Thank you, Bob, for those words. We're very honored to have one of our other legends uh, here today, and that is Miss Erin Kiltz. Erin was our April 2013 legend. And she nominated Karen. And so I'd like to have Erin come up and give us even more background about what Karen does, what makes her tick, and why she does this. Well, my, um, I'm not as, I don't wing it like John does. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of read a little bit because mine incorporates the nomination letter that I sent out. And so anyway, if you'll bear with my reading glasses. Um, I first met Karen when she was attending a tour that I was hosting. And I knew the minute she smiled that she was really special. But I knew nothing about her but just her smile. And um, so I, after kind of getting to know her and witnessing the commitment that she had to her family, to her community, and to Wilco, I knew that she was very more than qualified for the Legends Award. Um, as most of you know, and I'm kind of, like I said, incorporating the nomination letter, um, Karen Crosby works with the Williamson County Juvenile Center. Karen has facilitated a national model called service learning with a group of individuals classified as, don't be insulted, juvenile felons, which remember, you didn't even know that for a while, I think. If you were blindfolded and you heard these cadets present service learning. You would think they were members of the National Honor Society. Um, Karen has placed such high value on this population group by empowering them through her service learning class. For the first time, many of these individuals have learned through Karen, quote, from your service learning presentation, you are not bad kids, you've made bad choices. And so what about the bad choices? Karen is all about teaching, forgetting what lies behind and pressing on toward what lies ahead. She encompasses an unconditional love for each of her students and sees a magnitude of potential. 
they in turn respond, begin to grow, and heal. Karen Crosby infuses hope and courage into the heart of each student through facilitated, facilitating service learning. The students research different social issues and vote on a project to adopt. Karen is quick to say, it's all about my amazing kids, I did nothing. She only facilitates a project. The students take full ownership of their project while finding meaning and purpose through their contribution. Karen has taught them presentation skills, which has given them confidence to speak. She has shown them their ability to make a difference in this world and take responsibility for their actions. She has even inspired some of them in their future vocational choices. Karen has taught them that they can overcome their obstacles and can make life-giving choices that will bless their lives as well as others. I am confident in the big picture, one of the best and most defining moments of each of our cadets' lives is that they made a bad choice, got caught, and met Karen Crosby. To sum it up, Karen Crosby is a rare individual whom deserves to be recognized, not only for her empowering contribution to hundreds of students at Wilco, but for her lifelong commitment of volunteerism to the Georgetown community. Karen, thank you for being an instrument of hope and light to our community. You radiate God's love to all you meet. And these sunflowers, if, if Karen was a flower, she'd be a sunflower. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Those are very, very powerful words. Very powerful meeting as well. And thank you for making that nomination so that we could, in fact, recognize Karen. So what I'm going to do is ask uh, Karen to come up now. And Aaron, you were supposed to stay here. Remember how we rehearsed that? <laughs> and I'll ask George Wagner to come up as well. This next portion is the presentation of the gifts. And the young man who's going to make the presentations um, has a terrific job. Uh, he is Matt Smith, and he is the assistant director for this entity. And I remember from my days as an assistant director, I got to try a lot of new things, establish a lot of new initiatives. Those that worked were great. Those that didn't, the boss got the fix. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Matt Smith. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming out uh, to recognize Karen and, and be here for this important event. Um, I must say I'm honored to be able to present the awards today. Uh, I'd, I've not known Karen as long as, as the other folks who came up and talked. I've only known her for a couple of years. Uh, I did hear Karen's name quite a bit before I knew her, and I kept wondering, who is this Crosby lady uh, that everybody's talking about? Um, and Aaron talked a lot about the service learning presentations uh, that the youth have done, and, and that's been really what I've seen. That's been my experience in seeing how Karen rec uh, recognizes good in others. So I think this is a really appropriate named award, recognize good, because it, that's exactly what she does with the youth. Um, in, in our work, a lot of times we get caught up in recognizing what's not going right and looking at the court order, court order and violations. Um, and Karen has reminded us that we should be looking at the good and recognizing the good and the power of that. Um, and so I have been in awe of the, of the work that she's done and the transformation that I've seen in the youth that she works with. Um, I'll, I'd like to tell you about one experience I had. Uh, I was able to uh, watch the youth go present at a conference. This was Karen's service learning class, and it was down at the University of Texas Thompson Conference Center. And it was a trauma conference, um, and they, uh, they were not the keynote presentation, but they spoke uh, not too long after the keynote presentation. Um, and uh, they spoke to probably to hundreds of, you know, university officials and mental health advocates and some really high-level folks um, about service learning and then did a Q&A about um, what, it, what their lives have been like and what could have helped them. Um, and there was not a dry eye in the room. The entire audience at that conference center got up 
uh, and, and gave multiple standing ovations, uh, and they were truly touched. And so that was the second conference where I had seen them be uh, kind of uh, just completely blow out of the water uh, all of the professional presenters that were there. So t for, for them to be able to do that um, and to come up with that presentation on their own and facilitate it in that type of setting with such confidence uh, completely blew me away. And then the second piece that I saw, which to me was even more important, is I was here about two weeks later, and I went and watched some of the youth. Uh, that was not something that Karen had done, but it was another presentation we had here in our gym. And the uh, facilitator of that presentation broke the kids up into groups. And so they were supposed to talk in groups and then present back to the main group. And what I noticed was the kids that were in Karen's class were the leaders in their group. And so without Karen even being there, these youth were standing up and were leading others. And that's exactly uh, the power uh, of all of the work that she's done. And I, I think that one of these days, um, we will have some of these youth receiving a recognized good award. That, that's how powerful I think what she's done. Um, so at this point, I'd, I'd like to present some awards. Okay, so the first award I'll be presenting is a $100 gift card uh, to Karen for her personal use. Kids will think something good for them. Next, we have an RG soup mug. Uh, RG stands for recognize good, and the mug uh, displays some important symbols. So on the mug, there's a star that's illuminated. That's shining a light on all the positive activities. There's a ribbon that illustrates helping hands. Uh, the lines and stars of the Pentagon represent the connection of economic prosperity, employee well-being, professionalism, entrepreneurship, and community citizenship. The dove symbolizes peace, and the heart signifies caring. Next, we have another $100 gift card, um, and this is for Aaron as the nominator of Karen for this special award. So $100 gift card to Target. Thank you very much. Next, we're presenting Karen with a book of good deeds, and this book includes the original recognition and pictures and also has some pages for additional pictures and stories. Thank you. Next, we have um, a bromeliad, which is a token of uh, a living token for remembering today, a plant that Karen can keep to remember today. <laughs> Next, we have the presentation check. Um, and this is a large check that you cannot cash at a bank, but it is for display uh, in a location of Karen's choosing. John, please come up. And last, but certainly not least, uh, is the actual check that can be cashed at a bank. And this is the Recognize Good Foundation check, um, and it is going to be deposited in the account of the Chisholm Trail Community Foundation, um, which is associated with the locker. Matt, thank you very much. In fact, you did so well. I'm going to hire you on uh, to the next one we have. Very powerful words, very powerful concepts.
tremendous results. What I'd like to do now is give Karen the opportunity to tell us her thoughts. I'm like Aaron, I decided to write it down. You know I never do that, but I decided today I better. Is it going to fall? There? Okay. I got to do it too. I hate this. Okay. I do want to thank Recognize Good. Thank you all for being here and for doing this for me. Thank you. I am so honored for this award today, and thank you for letting me be a part of it. Aaron, thank you so much for nominating me. Um, we did meet, and we were instant friends when we met. We knew we were going to be a dangerous duo for Georgetown, and I think we're proving that already. Um, and um, she's always encouraging me and always so supportive of me and what I do. Thank you for that. Let's see. Um, Bob, thank you for believing in me. I didn't have the credentials. I was supposed to have a master's degree and all kinds of things. And he just waved that and believed in me and knew I had the life skills to do it. So thank you. And we have a shared vision and a shared mission. Thanks. Um, I'd like to um, thank all the staff who came today at the Academy. Thanks for supporting me. I know I've kind of rocked your world over here. But thank you for believing in me and supporting me and um, letting me share the students with you. Kiddos, thanks. Stand up, kids. This is what makes it happen for me. I agree with Matt. Take a good look, because they're going to be up here one day. I believe that with everything in me. You rock my world, guys. You know that. Thanks. I love you, too. My buddy, John. God bless him. <laughs> Sandy, thank you so much for sharing him with me. I know I take a lot of his time, and I appreciate it. And you too, Jim. <laughs> you two are really great for me and John because this takes a lot to make this happen. And thank you, John, for always being there and not leaving me. I pray and pray not to cry. <laughs> and thank you to all the rest of you who are here today for me. Um, if you, know, you do know me, and this is kind of hard for me to be the one in front. I like to be behind everyone encouraging you. But thank you for being here for me. Okay. Okay, so I'd like to take a minute and publicly thank my family. Um, they're an amazing support for me, and um, they kind of hang around with all my adventures, and, and they um, support me, and they never question when I have this brainstorm. I know they roll their eyes, Ashley. <laughs> and they make faces, but they always just say, okay, Mom, yes, ma'am, and off we go. And so I would really like to thank you guys for that. I have two of my children here, Quinn and Ashley. Thanks, you guys. Their brothers were here a few days ago but had to go back. Um, Mason and Reese couldn't be here with us today. And... Um, Whenever I say my kids, those of you who know me know I'm not talking about these two or my other two. You know I'm talking about those kids who just stood up in the back. They're my kids. When I refer to my kids, you guys who know me know I talk about my kids all the time, and it's those kids. These are my children. And a while back, my, my children were up talking, and, and then they, they kept saying, you know, mom's kids and mom's kids. And my students said, Miss Crosby, what do your kids call themselves? And I thought about it for a minute. I said, I guess they just called themselves us. I don't know. And then another student said, Miss Crosby, do your kids, do they get jealous because you love us so much? And I'm absolutely so happy to say, no, they don't. They share my love for you. They respect my love for you and my dream and my hopes that you all have. And they care about you because I care about you. Um, Carla and my granddaughter goes on adventures with us a lot and she, um, <laughs> and one day one of the students told me, they asked Carla and they said, why aren't you afraid of us? And she immediately said, because my Emma loves you so much. Thanks, Carla. My grandbabies, I have four of my now seven grandbabies. We've just had two new grandbabies in the last six weeks. So four of my grandbabies are here. Y'all stand up. <laughs> and 
You know, I think my grandkids just don't know any better. This is just what Amal does. Um, they believe, they grew into a family, they're born into a family that believes in helping other people. And so they just think that's the way the world is. I think that's how everybody does. They're all kind and loving and giving. I'm really proud of my children for raising them that way. Thanks, you guys, for always being there and reaching out. They're already grown up to be in the locker. Carlin had a great idea yesterday. And then my husband, Jim Crosby. What a guy. When I bopped him on upside his head when we were just 16 years old, I know he didn't know what he was getting into. Right, honey? <laughs> Most of you are adults when I've wrangled you in with me, but this poor guy was just a kid. He didn't know what was in store for him. But he's always encouraged me to be strong and independent and to do whatever I wanted to do. He's always there to pick me up when I stumble. He supports me in all that I do. Even when I take in stray kids and keeps me from bringing them in sometimes when he knows I shouldn't. He's a wonderful husband, a father, and a friend. And above all else, he respects me as a person and encourages the hopes and dreams that I have for helping others. Thank you. When I met George yesterday, he told me I would need to say a few words today, and my first thought was, don't cry, just don't cry. Well, so far, I'm almost hanging in there. Then I thought, okay, no big deal. I do this all the time with the kids I do for others. I thought, okay, well, okay, I can do that. Then I realized I was going to have to talk about myself. Not so good. I love talking about others, but not about myself. Then I thought, just be gracious, say thank you, and do what he told me to do. So I started thinking about it, and I thought, why do I do the things I do? <laughs> and then I thought, wouldn't that be nice to know? <laughs> Jim, Bob, kids, it'd be kind of nice to know why I do those things. And then I thought, would it be an appropriate answer to say, because God told me to do it? Then I thought, maybe I should come up with something more substantial and more concrete. So I thought about it, I thought about it, thought about it some more. Nope, no revelations, nothing came to mind, just that God told me to. All I could think of then were the hundreds and hundreds of children's faces that I've looked into over the years. That's all that just kept coming to my mind, face after face of hundreds of kids. Then I thought, well, duh, <laughs> that it really is that simple. I do it for all of the children that have looked me in the eyes and said, Miss Crosby, can you help me? And being me, I'd always say, sure, honey. Sure, I can help you. What do you need? Need a place to live? You can have my sofa for now. My next thought would usually be, holy cow, no, what am I going to do? How am I going to help this child with this need? So I've been really creative over the years to try and help each child that has a need, whatever that need may be. Of course, that's a daunting task, so I've recruited so many of you here today to help me. They are, um, then I had this idea to get kids to help each other. They're smarter and more creative than me anyway. I know my passion can be exhausting to others at times. Right, Aaron? <laughs> you know it too. It's the same for you. But the kids seems to, seem to be able to keep up with me. In fact, I usually have to keep up with them. And that is how we all got to this place, helping each other. When I look around this room, I'm humbled beyond belief. There's so many amazing people here, and I'm just a simple woman on a simple mission. I just want to help others. That's all. I argue with God on a regular basis that I think he has made a terrible mistake for choosing me for the missions he has set before me. I tell him that there are so many more qualified people than me to help these amazing students or to lead the locker. Just look around this room. You know I'm talking about amazing people in this room, and here I stand. There's so much I don't know. I seem to make so many mistakes. You know what happens when you question God, though, right? He just laughs and throws something bigger at you. 
you would think I'd learn that by now. I won't lie and say that this journey has been an easy one. We all know that nothing worthwhile ever is. Right, kids? Being here has had its challenges. There's been resistance and at times hurtful things have been said. There have been times when I thought, okay, I'm done. Life is too short to deal with all of this. There are other things that I know I can do. And then a student will come in and say something like, Mrs. Crosby, I've had the worst day, but I knew once I got to your class, it would be better. Or one of them will leave me a note on our message board, one to encourage me. Or one will say something like, Miss Crosby, I never knew I could be this awesome. And then I hush and I say, okay, God, I got the message. I'm here for these children. You know, every time one of these students walks through the door or I meet a new person, I think I've just been handed a gift. I can't wait to see what is inside and discover the joy that this person will bring to me. I've learned that not only do I need to unwrap the gift myself, but I need to help that person see what a gift they are too, to mirror to them the wonderful things that I see in them. I want to be a reflection to them of what I see in them and the wonderful things that I have found in them. I want them to see it for themselves the way I see them. As I thought about this, it dawned on me. This is what all of you here today are for me. You are my mirrors. You're the reflection of who I am, of what my life is. All of you, my family, my friends, my colleagues, and my students. From where I'm standing, I like what I see in the mirror. Thanks for being here today and being a reflection of my life. Again, very powerful words, very powerful thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony for today. I want to thank all the speakers who shared with us their insights into what uh, Karen does and what makes her tick. Remember, we'll have our Say Thanks Austin campaign coming up where when you say thank you to her today, that's one thing, but you can say thank you to her over and over again in January for the good things that she's done. And Karen, I have one item for you in that we have to make a deal that we need to stick around for another 40 years to see the good things that, that are going to happen here. Deal? Very good.